everybody, it's good to be with you again. This is Pastor Eric, and I have a word for you that I know will be a great blessing to you, enlightening and hopefully instructional. It's called The Reason We're In, The Season We're In. And I want to get right into it. Before we do, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, enlighten us. Show us the way in which we ought to go. Speak to us by your Spirit. Uh, give us understanding as it pertains to your Word. Uh, we will, Father God, not only read and hear and declare this word, but do what we're instructed in the word of God, because that is a sign that we truly heard you. In Jesus' name, we have every intention to pleasing you and glorifying you with our lives. Speak to us, dear God. Thank you for your kindness to us in your word in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to get right into this. I have a lot to say to you today about the reason we're in, the season we're in. And I want to start uh, in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 21. Follow along with me. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he was raised from the dead and seated at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. That's, that's just an incredible and wonderful run-on sentence from the Apostle Paul. Uh, it, it's as if he opened his mouth and put his pen to the page, and out of it flowed the revelation of Christ that was given to him. And the Holy Spirit led his hands to, to, to bring us to the place that he brought us in this particular passage, which is to the heavenlies. Uh, when we truly hear the word of God, and when we truly consider the people that we are in the Lord, uh, we, we know that we are heavenly folks. Uh, we now have a perspective on things that is 180 degrees different than what it used to be. We have learned to think of ourselves and the things around us in heavenly terms. Therefore, Paul talks about uh, uh, praying that we receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Christ, that the eyes of our understanding are being enlightened, that we may know the hope of his calling. Notice that the focus on all of those things is Jesus. And Jesus is seated with the Father at the right hand of the majesty on high. And the scripture tells us, Paul tells us at a later time, he says, we are seated with Christ in those heavenly places. So we have the same perspective that Christ has because we're in him and he is in us. We are with him and he is with us. So Paul takes us in the first chapter of Ephesians and lifts us to the place where we belong, into the heavenlies. And therefore, once again, we have a perspective that we cannot possibly have until we are seated with him in heavenly places, until we are resting in Christ, and until we allow him to explain things to us and show us things as he sees them with his perspective once again. Therefore, as I talk to you about the reason we're in, the season we're in, I want to let you know that it's my intention to speak from a heavenly perspective. And that is work, I believe, for all of us because we all live in this mean world and there's much to put our hands to, there's much to do, things that are legitimate, things that are difficult, things that are complex. And at the same time, in the light of all that, God's expectation of us, since he's revealed his son to us and given us his spirit, is to deal with those things, to speak into those things, and to see those things as he does, from his perspective. Once again, 180 degrees different than what it used to be in us. And so therefore, uh, the, the first thing that he does is lifts us up once again to where we belong, seated with him, looking at things 
the way he looks at them and measuring things the way he measures them. And when we do, we'll understand more about the reason we're in the season we're in. You see, God's love goes beyond the sensual realm. And his dealings with us go beyond the sensual realm and they go to the realm of the spirit. I, I say many times and I'll continue to say it that I never believe God is speaking to you when he's speaking to you. I never believe he's speaking to me when he's speaking to me. He's speaking to the spirit who dwells in me because the spirit who dwells in me understands the things of the spirit. So that's who he's speaking to. He's speaking to the new you. He's speaking to you, the you that is according to who he has made you now that you've said yes to Jesus Christ. So that is a completely different conversation than anyone, uh, that, that someone who's not in Christ can have. So he's speaking to us in his spirit. And, and because the reason he's doing that is because his principles and his reasoning are, are higher than ours. You see, he sits on the throne of heaven eternally. His rule is unshakable. His words are inscrutable. His character is unassailable. His grace is sufficient. His power is unmatched. And his love endures through all generations. And when we look at things from the perspective of one about whom those things are true, it's once again a completely different perspective. It is a higher and better perspective. God is faithful. He's going to keep every promise he has made, both small and great, so you and I can walk with assurance. He looks on the poor and the lost with pity and compassion, and he brings down every high and exalted thing. Even creation will be discarded in time, except that which is made in his image, and that's you and me. God is sovereign, and while he doesn't control all things, he's in complete control of all things. There's never a time or place where he is not God and where he is not good. He is spirit. He must be worshipped as such. So may we receive as he gives us the wisdom to hear to receive and understand spiritual things, things the way he sees them and the way we see them now that we walk in the spirit. Now, as I've said before, God's wisdom, his terms and conditions are spiritual and he deals with you and me accordingly. He speaks to us, he speaks to our spirits. His love is not emotionally based, so he's not speaking to us primarily on an emotional basis. Our emotions, as once again I've said to you before, are given to us to inform us, not to lead us. So God is not speaking to us in emotional terms. He's not speaking to us in transactional terms because we bring nothing to the table that is valuable to God other than what he's given to us in Christ. So we have nothing to trade except our sin, sickness, and sorrow. And God will take that and give us his spirit in return if we will reason with him. We can't bargain with God. As I said, we have nothing good on our own to offer. We have nothing that enriches him at all uh, because he was, is, and always will be perfect in himself. And we, when we receive him, are perfect in Christ. That is his goal for each and every one of us as he pulls us off to himself, consecrates us, uh, seats us in heavenly places, and gives us the perspective of heaven. Christ is the only conversation, by the way, beloved, is that God is interested in having with you. Because he is the only way to gain access to spiritual things and spiritual understanding. Uh, no matter how we approach spiritual things, unless we approach them in Christ, it won't be very, very long before we have gone off on a tangent, gone off the deep end, gone off the edge, so to speak, and fallen in the darkness, which has happened to many who walk a few steps with Jesus and then turn and begin walking in spiritual things under any other authority and according to any other voice and according to any other word than the word who is Jesus Christ. The only terms on which God is speaking to you and me is on the terms of Christ. God is not speaking to you and me on the terms of politics. God is not speaking to you and me on the terms of our nationalism. Uh, he's not speaking to you and me in, in terms of where we were born or the color of our skin or, or, or the language that we speak. He's speaking to us in the terms of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the message and the messenger of the covenant. He is what God is saying. So when we are placed in heavenly places with God, once again, not only do we begin to see everything as God would show us, we begin to see God as he would show us. We begin to see Christ as the beginning, the end, the alpha, and the omega of our faith. Once again, 
There's a reason you're in the season you're in. And understanding that reason is understanding that reason in Jesus Christ. I want to give you an example, a real life, real time example from the Apostle Paul. He says this in 2 Corinthians, the first chapter, verses 8 through 10. For we do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were burdened beyond measure, above strength, so that we despaired even of life. Yes, we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, who raises the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and does deliver us, in whom we trust that he will still deliver us. Um, it is my belief that God allows us to go through the seasons in our life, and I'm speaking particularly of the difficult seasons, the strange seasons, the fiery trials which are going to come to every life, the storms which are promised to come to every house. I believe he allows those things in our lives for one reason and one reason only. He allows those things in our lives, as Paul tells us here, that we should learn to not trust in ourselves, but in God. Everything that you and I go through, when that trial is finished, the assessment as to how we did in that trial and how we'll do in the next trial is a degree to which we have learned to depend on God and nothing else. See, God will bring you and me to a point where we no longer depend on our money, that we no longer depend on our popularity. We no longer depend on our accomplishments. We no longer depend on anyone else's accomplishments. We no longer depend on anything around us. We no longer depend on governments. We no longer depend on armies. We no longer depend on, on, our, on the things with which we defend ourselves. We don't depend on our brains, our brain power, and, and, and anything of our own resource. But we depend on Him. Now, whatever resource God gives us as a result of our depending on Him, remember, we're not depending on that resource. We're depending on the resourcer. God has bring, is bringing us to a place in this season where we're learning to look to him. Because if, if it's affecting you the way it's affecting me, there are times when, when I feel pretty confident about the moment that we're in, the times where I'm wondering what is going on, when, it is go, when is it going to end, um, how is this going to work out, what are things going to look like a month or two, uh, uh, a year or two down the line. But... Paul would have us to look at it this way, that whatever we go through, there's a reason we're in the season we're in. And whatever we go through in that season, the goal is, your goal and my goal, once we see it spiritually, is to come out men and women of greater faith than we went into it. So that's how I believe God grades us. If God is going to grade us on how we get through the situations of our life, the question is, is did we depend on him? and his wisdom, and his love, and his glory? Did we continue to worship? Did we continue to stay in the word, to stay in the house of God, to stay in the closet of prayer? Uh, was God able to use us in that time, though we may have been going through great difficulty, was he able to use us to be a blessing to someone else in the midst of what we're going through? And that's what Paul is speaking to us. And I think that'll be helpful to us in a practical sense, as it was for Paul, to, to go through this and, and come out on the other side and be able to say, I learned to trust in God in a way maybe I had not learned before. I trust more in him now than I did before COVID-19. Or you can fill in that blank with anything else. Before I went through that trouble, before I lost my job, before I lost my home, before uh, I left that, I lost that relationship, before um, I failed that class, <laughs> whatever it is, whatever, whatever the, the, the difficulties and the storms, the hardships that you faced, you and I need to come through those things and at the end of that season, be able to say, the reason I was in, the season I was in, is that I will come out more like Jesus. I will come out completely, completely walking by faith. So, beloved, there's more, far more to know about God than, than you and I can ever grasp in this life. So, uh, this is just one part of, of uh, one, one step along the journey of walking with God, but it is a major step, learning to depend on God uh, uh, through the seasons that we go through and depending on Him alone. I believe 
that there's a day that will come and we're going to spend eternity with him because it's going to take that long for us to truly get to know him. So in the meantime, in the meantime, you and I are to spend our time waiting at his gates, falling at his feet, seeking his face, serving in his house, standing on his word, lifting up his name, growing in his love, his wisdom, and his virtue. Uh, and I believe that's a full-time job. I believe that takes 24 hours of every day and seven days of every week, 365 days of every year, and some years 366 in order for us to learn to walk in the fierce and sweet disciplines of what it means to be a child of the Most High God. And so Paul, as I read earlier, spoke and he prayed uh, that, that the Lord would, would, would give understanding to the Ephesian church, spiritual understanding. And he says this, also, a beautiful prayer in Colossians 1.9, one of my favorite verses in the whole Bible, Paul is saying to the Colossian church, for this reason we also, since we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And that is my prayer for you also, that, that you will be filled with the knowledge of God's will for your life in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, beloveds, spiritual understanding. Once again, that is a completely different concept than any other kind of understanding. I want to give you one more parenthetical piece of instruction here. Remember, our times and seasons are firmly in the Lord's hands. Remember that. That's important. He's promised to walk with us through the best and worst of circumstances. Remember when David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you're with me. Your rod and your staff are my comfort. You even prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. God is with us wherever he leads us. The question for me always is, am I following in the path that God is leading? No matter what the season is, no matter what the location is, no matter whether I am I am uh, lying in, in, in fields of plenty and whether the cupboards are full or whether they're bare and I don't know where the next meal is coming from. The question is, am I being led in the spirit? Am I walking with the great shepherd? So consider that this may be a season designed by the Lord just to draw you close to him. That you would turn your face heavenward and that God will have an opportunity to reveal Jesus to you and to teach you his ways. Now about times and seasons, remember Ecclesiastes 3 tells us there is a time and a season and a purpose. There's a time and a season for every purpose under heaven. And I believe there's, he begins then to, to, to speak about what those times and seasons are and, and in, in verse 5 in Ecclesiastes 3, he says this, a season for embracing and a season to refrain from embracing. I, I bring that one forward because in this time when we're, we're dealing with the, the COVID-19 uh, situation, we have been asked um, to either shelter in place or, or to keep safe distance uh, social distancing, those kind of terms that we really didn't really have a context for before, but we do now. But I want to let you know the Bible has already arrived there. The Bible, if you read your Bible daily, uh, by the way, I believe you'll be much more prepared for the things that present themselves daily than you ever could be otherwise. And so if you've read Ecclesiastes lately, there's a time and a season for every purpose under heaven. And God is the one who changes the season and the times are in his hands. He has placed us in this time-space continuum for a purpose that his son might receive glory for, uh, from us. And he does receive glory from us when we dwell in the land and we feed on his faithfulness, no matter what's going on around us. Our Lord is faithful. So in this time of, I believe we're in a time um, uh, of refraining from embracing. And I want to say this to all of you who love the gathering of the Fellowship of Believers. Um, I do. I'm right there with you. I have literally spent all my adult life in the house of the Lord, serving God and his purposes. 
And I found myself in the house of God every Sunday and Wednesday and many, many days in between for 40 years now. And it is a good and wonderful thing, maybe the best decision that I have ever made. And this is the first time where I have not been able to regularly and consistently meet with believers. And it's probably true of many of the people who hear my voice. Yet and still, there's a scripture. There it is. a season for embracing and a season to refrain from embracing. Now, whatever your stance on the issues as they're presented to us in the day, I would like for you to do as I've done, which is go to the word of God and any place where I plant my flag and plant my feet, let me be able to pull forth the scriptures and say, this is the scripture which is keeping me solid and strong and upright in the moment. And this is the one that, that, that settles me in this day when, when I can't stand before my congregation and, and I can't do the things that I normally do in fellowship with men and women and, and kids um, that, that, are, that are my sheep, that the, the, the sheep of, of the, this pasture. But yet and still, here's the word of the Lord. Eric, there's a season to refrain from embracing. And in that season, I'm to be every bit as joyful, every bit as productive, every bit as focused on the Lord and, and his things as I would be if we were able to do what we normally and regularly do. By the way, beloved, there's no guarantee that we'll ever get back to what we normally and regularly do. And is that the point that we go through the season to go back to the season we were in before? Now, I'm not saying that things, how things will be different going forward when we are able to gather again, but just perhaps, just perhaps, there's something more, there's something new, there's something fresh, there's something greater of the revelation of Jesus Christ that is going to be revealed in your fellowship than has ever been revealed before. And so let's look forward, not with fear and trepidation, not with even any anxiety, that day will come, I believe, when we're able to gather together as we once were. But in the time between now and then, let us be found faithful. Let us be found in our hearts in the house of God. Let us be found at his feet. Let us be found with our hands lifted. Let us be found in worship. Let us be found in our homes reading the scriptures. Let us be found on our prayer walks. Let us be found, let us be found doing the things that, that really are, are, are the sign of, of who we are. Gathering is just one of those things. And we're called to do that. And one day we will. But in this season... Just perhaps there's a season to refrain from embracing. Let that be good with your spirit. Let it be good. You may be asked to stay home. Stay home with joy. That when we go out, we go out having obeyed God and having found that he was faithful no matter what the trial, no matter what the circumstance. Do not be anxious. Do not be in a hurry. God is Lord right where you are. And when two or three are gathered together, there he is in their midst. Gather with those who are there with you until God changes the season. So finally, beloveds, if I haven't said it before, there's a reason you're in the season you're in. And I'm going to give you the reason you're in the season you're in. Is that you're learning to trust God like never before. You're learning to sing and rejoice no matter what the circumstance because your God was, is, and will be God. He was, is, and will be good. And if you're in him, you were, you are, and you will be good too. God bless you. I hope that word was good to you. Share it with whoever you like and I hope God put somebody on your heart that needs some encouragement, that needs some strengthening, and may just need to change their focus a bit, get their eyes off of themselves and off of their circumstances and off of others and put them on Jesus Christ. So let's pray. Father, we thank you just for how good and kind you are to give us your word and pour it out so freely. Um, I often say, Lord, that the joy of the Lord is my strength. I've been taught that in the scriptures. And it says, in the presence, in your presence is the fullness of that joy. I, I thank you that in my household, and I pray that in the households of those who are listening to me, that that scripture is more real than ever. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And in your presence is the fullness of that joy. 
Fill us today. Be present with us today. Anyone who's listening to me, Father, that's been feeling distant from you, that's been feeling worried, frustrated, or depressed, or afraid, come right now and pour your spirit afresh and anew upon them and upon their household and lift their heads that they might see Jesus. That's my prayer, and I pray that in the strong name of Jesus and the power of your spirit. Amen. Bless you once again, beloved ones. Thank you for hanging out with me. Uh, go to our website, eatherfathershouse.org, and our Facebook page, The Father's House Eugene. Uh, there are lots of goodies there for you. There's some good word. There's some good Bible study. Um, there, there's opportunities for you to get some good worship in. And uh, thank you so much also for your continued faithfulness in, in giving the, those that uh, who are, are, are sheep of the Father's house. Thank you so much. Your faithfulness means everything. And for those of you who God's moved on your heart, thank you so much for your generosity. Um, there's information about, uh, uh, about ways to give uh, on our website and on the Facebook page uh, on my giving. And we thank you so much, more than anything, for the spirit of generosity which you have been showing and the faithfulness you've been showing in this difficult day. Um, continue to go forward and give God the glory he deserves. Uh, finally, last reminder is uh, my daily dose of courage. Uh, it is a 365-day-a-year blog that I share uh, on the Father's House page. Um, and also, you can go to uh, the website, uh, the URL that's there on the screen. God bless you. Thank you for being who you are in Christ and making your Heavenly Father proud by your faith. Talk to you soon.